federal parliament and the national politics have come to a state of standstill as the ruling Nepal Communist Party has failed to pick up its common candidate for the post of House Speaker. Despite marathon meeting in this regard, an understanding has remained elusive, highlighting the top-level differences in the ruling party. Good morning, I'm Amit Pakarel and these are the top stories this hour. The issue of finalizing the candidate for the post of House Speaker fails to enter the ruling party secretariat meeting. Senior leader Salonat Kanal questions the decision-making capacity of the chairman duo. Nepal Army frequently organizes health camps with the money sanctioned by Health Ministry, continues denying public access to the army hospitals on various pretexts. Over 50% of Nepal Rastra Bank's staff embark on foreign tours in a year's time, up to 160 million rupees spent from state coffers for the visits of 500 employees. And Marty's Memorial A Division League to see a class between top contenders Manang Mersangdi and Matindra Club today. Jaulak Hill scheduled to take on NRT in another match. Let's begin with the national political updates. The ruling Nepal Communist Party has remained undecided regarding its candidate for the post of House Speaker. The party has failed to finalize the candidate due to continued refusal of Chairman Duo, KP Sarmaoli and Puspa Kamal Dahar on budging from their stances. Prime Minister Oli has been insisting on Subhas Anandamang as the candidate of the House Speaker, while Chairman Dahal has been pushing for Agni Sapkota. The issue has so far failed to enter the party's secretariat meeting due to the persistent differences between the chairman duo. As a result, the party's secretariat and central committee meetings have been deferred by three weeks. Meanwhile, the senior leader of ruling Nepal Communist Party, Talanath Kanal, has raised questions on the decision-making capacity of the chairman duo. Senior leader Kanal has stated that the weakness of the chairman duo in this regard has caused a negative impact on the party's overall activities and the government's performance. The candidates from different political parties filed a candidacy for the upcoming election of the National Assembly yesterday. The candidates representing their respective parties registered their nomination at the office of the election officer in concerned provinces. The ruling Nepal Communist Party has registered the names of 16 candidates, whereas the main opposition Nepali Congress has filed 14 candidates for the election. Spokesperson of Nepal Communist Party, Naren Kazi Shrestha, registered his nomination from Kandaki province at the office of the election officer in Pokhara. In Janakpura province, two cadres from Nepal Communist Party and Rashtri Yasanatha Party Nepal jointly organized a rally before the nomination. The ruling Nepal Communist Party and Rashtri Yasanatha Party Nepal have formed electoral alliance in province two for the election. According to the deal, both the parties will contest for two seats, each and support each other for the election. Likewise, Samazbadi Party has also filed its nomination from the province. The election of the National Assembly is scheduled for 23rd of January that will elect 18 new members for the Upper House. The members of the Provincial Assembly's mayors and deputy mayor of the municipalities and chairperson of, and vice chairperson of the rural municipalities will vote in that election to elect the Upper House members. The Nepal Army frequently conducts medical camps throughout the country. Recently, the Army organized a medical camp in Mahotari district. However, the financial responsibility of the camp was taken by the Health Ministry. This clearly shows the government policy encouraging the Nepal Army for temporary medical camps instead of focusing on the steady progress of government hospitals. We have a report. The Nepal Army organized a week-long health camp from 13th of December in Mahotari. 165 medical personnel of the Army attended to around 34,000 patients during the camp and almost 300 major surgeries were carried out. The patients who did not get proper treatment from the nearby government hospitals were grateful to the Nepal Army for the services. However, the Health Ministry took all the financial responsibility of the camp, though it was conducted by the Nepal Army. The ministry had allocated 7 million rupees for the camp, although it could not provide enough medical personnel or medicines to the district hospital. This has caused the failure of the insurance program introduced by the government in 49 districts as 82% of the total number of insured people in the district did not renew their policy. The actual public health issues could not be addressed permanently with such medical camps. 
Despite the directive from the government three years ago, the Nepal Army has not yet started service for the public in its hospitals. The question has been raised on the credibility of the medical camps conducted by the Nepal Army at a time when the military, with a medical workforce of 2,300, has not started its service for the public. बन्ने दृष्टिकोण ले आए मिले सही ने मोबाइल हॉस्पिटल को सेवा संचालन को शुरुआत करें को A report has revealed that Nepal Rastra Bank, which has been controlling the foreign exchange service per public, has been sending its employees on foreign tours, spending more than 150 million rupees annually. The report says that the central bank sent over 500 of its staff on foreign trips, providing incentives, including travel and daily allowances, along with recreational allowances. Nepal Rastra Bank imposed limitation on foreign exchange in October 2018, citing the higher outflow of cash because of the trade deficit. The central bank reduced the foreign exchange from $2,500 to $1,500. In addition to that, the central bank imposed another provision from last month to control the foreign visits of public. However, Nepal Rastra Bank itself, with 1,100 staff, is sending half of its staff in foreign visits annually. More than 500 staff visited third countries citing various motives of meetings, seminars, trainings and observation visits. The bank spent 52 million rupees on air tickets and 59.8 million rupees on daily allowances. Besides that, the bank had provided an additional 45.9 million rupees for transport and recreational allowances to its officials. The total budget spent last year on foreign visits has exceeded 16 million rupees more than that of the previous year. The visiting officials of the bank individually received $160 as travel allowance and $150 as hotel allowance each day. In addition to that, they received $200 as recreational allowance and $90 as transport allowance. They even received an extra $330 on clothes allowance in each visit. This has raised the credibility on the work performance of the bank as a whole from the such visits. The officials of the central bank desperately trying but they brought tours as they would receive attractive incentives during the visit. High-level and influential officials would visit US and Europe, whereas the assistant-level staff grab opportunities for India and other South Asian countries. Moreover, the officials of the employee union maintain silence as they also approach for such kind of practices. The bank, which is controlling the public for foreign visits and sending its staff with attractive packages, shows the contradictory policy carried by the bank. The central bank even does not follow the Public Purchase Act to buy air tickets for the staff the bank reimburses based on the invoices submitted by the staff instead of buying cheap air tickets through quotation bid by the company. In our public voice segment, we had asked the residents of Sindhupasuk district what can be done to reduce the increasing negative effects of climate change. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public pulse. Call car khana aru. Chai new ni karan garnu pare. Tes ko bi call pa maachi saure urza aru ko prayog garnu pare onsa. Ado ki baad ni sine yo carbon dioxide gas aru chani. Is lai chai kosari ilai new ni karan gar dai. Is ko bi call pa roz dai. Yo carbon dioxide gas lai chai new ni karan garnu garnu agadi bolnu pare. Board bi ra ko bina shona dinu baaye na. Jo ban jungle ko phadani ona dinu baaye na. Carbon dioxide aru chai to utpadan garni testa. उद्योगी कॉल कारखाना है रोंसन तेज़ तार लाजी ऑटो नू पड़ता किसी लाइज़ हैं अलग तो बेसी मोहतो के साथ आयोग आगे बनने पड़ता है। It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse and the question is what you see on Nepal Rastra Bank haphazardly sending its employees on foreign tours while controlling expenses of the public in this regard and also to a emptying its reserve. The lack of monitoring and see way to keep employees under control. The voting is on. Type any WS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Now the sports update. Sports news. League leaders Marang Hussangdi Club is taking on title contender, contenders Matsinda Club in today's match and the Mortis Memorial A Division League. The match between the two heavyweights is scheduled at the Capitals Dashrat Stadium from 3 in the afternoon. Both the teams are undefeated in the tournament so far and the winner will lead the table. 
Both Machindra and Manang have three wins and one draw. However, Manang is ahead by one point as Machindra last season was in the relegation zone and is carrying one negative point. Machindra this season has roped in several national players, including six players from the defending champions Manang Mersengdi. Machindra will go into the match looking for three points, while Manang Moral is also high due to the return of his star player Anzan Mister. Meanwhile, prior to this match, Anati will take on Taulakil in the first match of the day, also at Dasrath Stadium. Liverpool defeated Merseyside rivals Everton with a superb strike from teenager Curtis Jones sealing a 1-0 win in the FA Cup third round last night. Jones' second half curlers and infield in ecstasy as the club's youth academy graduates handed Everton an embarrassing derby defeat. The 18-year-old Liverpool-born midfielder was making only his fifth appearance and his memorable match winner was his first senior goal. Jones is the youngest goal scorer for Liverpool in a Merseyside derby since Robbie Fowler, without a win over their rivals in the competition since 2010 and thrashed 5-2 at Enfield in the Premier League earlier this season. Everton will feel the pain from this defeat against their understrength neighbours for some while. In other matches played last night, Lucas Moura kept Tottenham's FA Cup hopes alive with the equaliser in the one-all draw at second tier. Middle sprawl while Chelsea cruised to a 2 0 win over Nottingham Forest. It's time now for our special segment of the beat. A thick blanket of snow covered the seven hill districts of Far West since Friday. The snow disrupted vehicular movement while the temperature dipped significantly to affect general life. This is the second time this winter season that the Far West region has experienced snowfall. The region had witnessed snowfall in early December this season. Even as the life has been greatly disrupted, people came out of their homes to spend time with snow, some describing it as a lifetime experience. The Far West districts of Darchula, Dadildhura, Baitadi, Bajang, Doti, Acham and Bajra have all received heavy snowfall. People have been facing a hard time mainly because the highway connecting these seven Far West districts on the Bhimdatta Highway and Dashrath Chand Highway have been greatly hampered. The disruption of traffic has also forced people to walk long distances. Bilkharka, Bhakunde, Shaukharka and Bhakka on the Bhimdatta Highway have received up to two feet of snowfall. Meanwhile, farmers in the region expressed happiness, hoping for a better yield this season. Paintings and scriptures associated with Lichavi era have been recovered during the reconstruction works of the capital's Jaya Bageshwari temple. The revelation has, however, added to the confusion regarding how the age-old paintings and scriptures dating back to over 1300 years old could be safeguarded. The Jay Bageshwari temple in the capital was damaged during the 2015 April earthquake. After the gajur or the top of the temple slipped, there was initial confusion regarding how the renovation works could be carried out. Following years of confusion, an agreement was finally reached to proceed with the renovation works. As the workers started demolition works for the reconstruction, a new temple was detected. The experts have confirmed that the findings are related with Lichabi era, which is over 1300 years old. The temple of Jai Bageshwari has its cultural and religious significance as women used to pay their homage at Jai Bageshwari temple before going for sati with their dead husband, a tradition which was abolished exactly 100 years ago in 1920. This is Bipashna Tamang for Kantipur News Desk. And that's all for this hour. Keep watching Kantipur Television SD for more news and entertainment. Have a good day.